I'm Derek, a father, an entrepreneur, filmmaker, friend, a person who's just trying to figure out life. Things happen for a reason if you choose that they happen for a reason. You can just say this sucks and then it can just bury you. Then it didn't happen for a reason. You know, it just happened because life was hard. I was extremely tired and my body felt exhausted just physically. It's really neat to have you guys come in here, film this today. Um, I don't know how we would have gotten through it without having the second family here, this group with me. You know, if it inspires one person, it was worth it, I think. Here I am, you know, 31 years old and dealing with colon cancer. And the average age of colon cancer is 70. I never thought I'd be dealing with this at this time in my life. I thought I'd be, you know, building a family, building a business, growing. I never expected this thing in, in, in my life that just completely changed everything. Sometimes the weightiness of just dealing with cancer and life and death is really hard. And it's hard to kind of wrap my head around it sometimes. August 24th, 2017 was the hardest day of my life, but I also remember it as the day I became alive. So I was scheduled on August 24th to go in for the colonoscopy. I wrote in my journal that morning, I said, uh, 8 24 17 colonoscopy. Today is a big day or it could just be another day. It all depends on how my colonoscopy goes. I said, Lord, I trust you right now. That is all I can do at this moment, trust in you. That was like such an interesting moment um, before the storm almost, you know, for me. Um, I think in big moments in your life, you remember weird details. You remember all the little things. Um, this is the moment that I remember the, all the details, more so than any other moment in my life. When I woke up from my colonoscopy, Dr. Shi came in the room, and Ash and I instantly knew that this wasn't going to be good news. Uh, he walked in and he said, "You know, I'm, you know, I'm so sorry, Derek, but um, you know, you have a, a tumor in your colon, and uh, it's cancerous. You know, you might have to have chemo and." My, like, my head is you know, spinning at that moment. I mean, I, I, I look over at Ashley when he says chemo, tears were just streaming down her face. Um, just because she saw the journey, her dad passed away of cancer 15 years ago, of pancreatic cancer. Yeah, cancer, chemo, that was all super scary and overwhelming. And then to hear that again with Derek, um, it of course brought all those um, emotions back and I was just like thinking not again having to deal with this. Things were flashing through my brain of like my kids weddings that am I not going to be with for their weddings and Ash and I got married super young and I've always dreamed of us having our 60th wedding anniversary you know or 50th wedding anniversary whatever when we're 70 and 80 years old together and is that not gonna happen? And, and uh, those two minutes were the longest of my life. On August 24th, 2017, I was diagnosed with stage 3B colon cancer. I went into the, the bathroom real quick and it was just like, just a moment to kind of separate myself. And I just remember crying and like, I just broke down. I was like, I, I just can't deal with this mentally. It was just too much. Uh, and at that moment, I got a call from, which was, I think, the hospital line. I kind of knew the number. He tells me that, like, the CAT scan came back negative, came back clear um, from cancer. The only thing that we saw was what the colonoscopy said, is that you have a tumor in your colon, in your sigmoid colon. Relief hardly explains how you feel when you realize that it's not terminal, that new reality of what I thought was was false, that he will be around. And Dr. Sham called us and was like, he'll go in, he'll cut 
six or eight inches out, um, reconnect, it's at the perfect location. And at that moment we could breathe a little bit. You know, we didn't know what was next. We didn't know exactly how it was all gonna work out. I knew that he would do well, he was young, he was healthy. Um, we didn't run into any unexpected findings during surgery. We didn't see any evidence of significant spread to other areas. And then the next big thing was to see if there was any evidence of uh, cancer in the lymph nodes and would he need to do chemotherapy afterwards. Felt like, like I was gonna be okay, you know? I, like that God knew what he was doing and he was gonna take this whole crazy situation, make it something that I learned from and make it a positive in my life. You realize you got colon surgery, Yeah, right? well, this is worse <laughs> than that. Um, this is the Deaner signing off. I knew that was coming. <laughs> After two days, we were able to go home, and then they had told us that a few of the lymph nodes that they tested, they were infected, so um, to make sure that they didn't find a host anywhere else in his body, that he recommends six months of chemo. You know, like, okay, like, he recommended this, this is what we'll do. The doctor said this is the insurance policy to make sure it doesn't come back. So we're like, okay, yes, we want to make sure this does not come back, so let's do this. Treatment one of chemo, next 12 treatments, six months, we'll see how that goes, but ready or not, ready, Ash? Yep. And it's a rainy day, which is lovely. <laughs> Here we go. I think that he was able to take a problem that was unexpected, look at the options, start the ball rolling pretty quickly, and have the mindset that, okay, I have this diagnosis. I'm not sure why I have this diagnosis, but this is how we're gonna take care of it. And he's young and healthy. You have to be an advocate. You have to listen to your body. You know, I had blood in my stool, and it was super scary for me to go into the doctor. But I realized that early detection to cancer is the key. So if you're going to have it, why not find out earlier in the process so it hasn't spread through your body? And it's not always hemorrhoids. It's not always, oh, I'm just constipated. Um, sometimes we find cancer, like in Derek's case. The worst, like the flu-like flu -like symptoms and achy and tired and nauseous and stuff like that. So, but day five comes and then definitely better. But, uh, not so good right now. Okay, time for dinner. He is strong, never afraid of a challenge. I mean, I can hardly remember any times that he stayed home from work. And I think that's kind of a dad thing to do, to just push through and fight because you know what you're fighting for, your family. Daddy and um, go at the doctors and, and you feel better on them. And... I was really surprised when you told me. I knew that you were going to be okay. Looking at him, it was like, these are just amazing kids. and. Those are the times that give you that extra strength to like keep pushing through when you're really not feeling well and not feeling well emotionally either, you know? Hey Melinda, this is Derek Diener calling. Hey, how are you? How are you? Good, how are you? Good. I, I was calling to schedule my last one actually. First day of chemo, first day of spring, huge snowfall. <laughs> Definitely gonna remember this week. I don't even think it's registered that I'm even having chemo almost. Because I'm so kind of excited that it's my last day and it's just kind of like crazy. Like, I don't know, it's weird. You know what? I can do this. I can. I can beat this. I have, I have amazing people around me, amazing doctors. You know, I, I can't say it enough about 
The Amp Barshaker Institute has just been incredible. I would sometimes visit the meditation room afterwards or before, holding on to these little things that mean a lot. We are just getting together some of his close friends and his family, and we're going to surprise him with having us all be there to just celebrate that victory and um, just to show him the love and support that he's had through this journey. I elected to be very public with my diagnosis and be very open about it because family and friends around me are important to me and I just felt like the prayer and support from people was something that would help me, you know, when I'm down or just help me along the way. I didn't want to do it alone. Thanks everybody for the support the last seven months. It's been amazing, so really appreciate it. Life is not going to get easier or get simpler, but how you handle it is going to get easier and simpler. I think if I look back in 10 years, I think I'm going to look at my life as like pre-cancer diagnosis and post-cancer diagnosis. I've gone through so much heartache development, great times, bad times, in six months more than I did maybe in 10 years.